Today we're going to talk about the paper Systematic Comparison and Assessment of RNA-Seq Procedures for Gene Expression Quantitative Analyses, which was recently published in Nature Scientific Reports by these authors. I highly recommend reading the original article as it's a very interesting design and contains a lot of interesting conclusions. On a biological level, this was the experimental design. They utilized two multiple myeloma cell lines specified here and performed three different treatments. For the different treatments, they performed RNA-seq, ultimately sequencing a total of 18 samples, three replicates per condition. And for the control samples, they performed QT, QRT-PCR. QRT-PCR is considered the gold standard in terms of an understanding gene expression changes and measuring the an RNA transcript, for example. As such, this basically stood in as a kind of baseline truth when they were comparison, comparing different RNA sequencing processing pipelines. They looked at 192 different pipelines as a result of all of the different combinations of these different tools within the RNA-seq data analysis workflow. So they chose one of three different trimming tools to take off adapters. Then they looked at all of these different alignment programs, some of which specifically were aligning to the transcriptome, others which were aligning to the genome or the same method for that, some which combined genomes and transcriptomes. They separated between regular aligners and the new pseudo aligners represented by salmon, sailfish, and callisto. And they generated, utilizing the different counting techniques, all of these different nor end up normalized, so to say, values. F PKMs, TPMs, TMMs, such and such has come out. And then once, so they had these 192 pipelines, write that down in order to get counts, some kind of count at the end. Then they tested 17 different differential gene expression techniques, running these, you know, with slightly different settings to get a grand total of 17 that they then compared as well for efficacy. And so what are these kind what are we comparing? How are we comparing these different pipelines? How is truth established? Well, it's kind of hard to establish a sort of baseline truth, but they looked at it in terms of precision and accuracy. So precision was calculated by looking at 107 reference expressed genes. So the reference expressed genes were selected by take, looking at previous RNA-seq data that included 32 human cell lines and basically looking for genes within those 32 human cell lines that for all 192 pipelines had greater than four, four count expression, greater than four count expression. Additionally, they looked at their own RNA-seq data and also ran all the 192 pipelines and looked at those that had greater than four count expression. And so when you looked at those, all of these different sort of lists and merged them together, you ended up with 107 genes that sort of met the criteria for the 32 human cell line RNA-seq data and for the RNA-seq data for the 18 samples that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And so these 107 were then sort of titled as the reference genes. And they were utilized within this sort of matrix in order to rank and calculate the coefficient of variation whose mathematical description is shown here. It's based on the median looking at the expression value for a certain gene within a sample. 
And so you calculate essentially the precision of a given of a given pipeline utilizing the, the 107 reference genes. Accuracy was measured with 32 tested genes that were tested via QRT-PCR, that gold standard. The 30 genes were basic, well, 30 of the genes were selected from the 107 reference genes. So they took the 10 that had the highest coefficient of variation, they took the 10 that had the lowest coefficient of variation, and then they selected another 10 sort of randomly that were not part of those two groups. And then they also put in two housekeeping genes. Those were GAPDH and ACTB. And that's how you get the 32 genes that were tested via QTPCR, QRTPCR, sorry. And that basically they utilized Pearson coefficients in order to rank the accuracy for all of the different for the 192 pipelines. This was, in short, the base aligning strategy. How do, can we compare accuracy and precision? And so I'm sure you're awaiting with bated breath the results. And in number one, you can see that the Chermomatic RUM HTC Union TMM normalization method had the highest precision and accuracy as a measure of the lowest score ranking, so to say. What's notable here, and you can tell right away, is that TMM is always the sort of number one normalization method when you look at counts. And you also see that HTSeq is higher than its other counterparts. Alignment and trimming, these two, there's more variability within the top 10, as you can see. And then they looked at, they created graphs for all of the different, when you look at the 192 pipeline, when you look at all of the pipelines that include a particular, for example, adapter cutting, trimming software, and you look at all of the rankings for all of the pipelines that included that one, where did they sort of tend to fall scale? And you can see that all, including all of the pipelines for these different softwares, that there really wasn't um, a statistically significant difference across the adapter cutting, across the trimming step. And this was for basically the one to the left includes all of the pipelines that output raw reads, effective counts, estimated counts, and coverage. The green basically took out the pipelines that generated these statistics, that generated these types of counts at the end. But you can see that the, the lack of statistical significance holds for both of these. And it seems, you know, when you look at just raw reads and such, that this same pattern, that there's no statistically significant difference for the aligners. But it turns out when you remove sort of raw reads and just look at some more uh, normalized counts, some counts that have undergone a little bit more processing, that there is a difference between bow tie and all of the other aligners, star, top hat 2, RUM, high set 2, that they tested within here. But the overall conclusion was that for trimming and aligning the variation was between the pipelines or sort of the inclusion didn't make or break a pipeline so to say. It was more the count assignment and the normalization or the final sort of um, count output that had a lot more of an impact. So you can see that Cufflinks and RSEM took the prize for having them theoretically having the best sort of ranking. Certainly, they're much more closely, more closely tightly packed together. But when you do take out the, as mentioned before, pipelines that used raw reads, or effective counts, estimated counts of coverage, you get that HTSeq 
those results as you're seeing why HTSeq ultimately won the day because it has a lower sort of scaled, mean scaled cumulative ranking than either RSCM or Cufflinks even though it does have more variability than either of those two. And as you can see the result we saw before with TMM it's outpacing a lot of the other techniques and strategies as before. And so the reason why they tried this again without when you take out raw reads, effective counts, estimated counts, and coverage, as you can see, when you look at those technologies, where you look at those rankings, those are the four that have the lowest sort of ranking. So they took out a lot of the pipelines that way that we're ranking really low to see that among the pipelines that, okay, ranked higher in our original experiment, can we see any patterns among those? That's sort of the purpose of these green labeled box plot charts. And so they also performed the similar kind of analysis for the different pseudo alignment programs. And as you can see, there's no statistical significantly there are no statistically significant differences between those different programs. Figures five and six within the paper provide information on differentially expressed genes. So for example, for all of the different techniques that they utilized, what are the number of differentially expressed genes at different FD, FDR cutoffs. So I believe it was, um, for example, less than 0 0.05, so a very typical cutoff, less than 0 0.01, less than 0 0.001. And then another one, they looked at statistics such as Matthew's correlation coefficient accuracy area under the RRT, RRC curve positive predictive value, negative predictive value, true positive rate, and true negative rate in order to, when you compare basically the outputs, the DGEs, the adjusted p-values for the DGEs for the genes that they had QP, QRT-PCR for, that they, could, that they had p-values from the QRT-PCR for. So they could compare those different p-values, adjusted p-value from the differentially expressed gene program with the p-value from the QRT-PCR in order to basically across all of these different metrics in order to see which pipelines ultimately were the most effective according to how you rank based on these different metrics. And so I'll just sort of put that as metric ranking. If you're interested in learning more, I'd highly recommend looking at figure six within the paper. Figure seven, though, is sort of the summary slide where they look at the diff all the different methods and provide scores for their overall performances on a scale of one to 17, one being good, 17 being bad, for different, breaking it out for the different scenarios looking for consistency perhaps among the different methods, and then also based on the statistical cutoff. So for example, they note here that BASIC has some of the highest and most consistent score, except for this value, but that it had one of the highest and most consistent scores. They, they noted it for that reason. Again, a very interesting report. I'd highly recommend checking it out if you're interested in more details. Thank you for listening.